Hello, Haunted Family. Welcome back. Story 1 Living Dead My brother had cancer, and he had been fighting it for a long time. The disease was winning at this point. My parents kept him home when he was very ill. They made a room downstairs so they could easily take him back and forth to doctor's appointments. At the time, he'd started talking into thin air, like he was actually seeing someone there. He told them to go away. He wasn't ready to go with them yet. My parents thought it was the medication causing him to hallucinate. But, at the same time, we all noticed things different happening in the house. Doors opening and closing all by themselves. Lights turning off and on. I was about eight years old at the time. I remember the door that led from the kitchen to the dining room. Just shut in my face one day. The doorknob was moving back and forth very rapidly. I tried to grab it and stop it. But the force was too strong. I even tried to run around from the dining room through the living room to go into the kitchen from another area. And the door just stayed shut. The doorknob was still moving, so I knew for sure that there was nobody really there. My mom said that her door kept opening up. And she would close it, and it opened up again. Finally, she got fed up. She yelled at whatever it was to just make up its mind. You either come in, or you stay out. At that moment, the door slammed itself shut. At other times when my parents had taken my brother to the hospital, I'd be at home alone, waiting for them. I could always hear someone calling my name. I would get so scared, and I would wait by the front door until my parents would come back. My brother, he continued to talk to something, and would always ask if we saw them too, but we never did. When he passed away, we thought that'd be the end of the noises. But they continue to this day. They're not as frequent as when my brother was alive. But every now and then, we'll hear running up and down the stairs. Or a name being called. Or doors slamming shut all by themselves. It didn't end with my brother's passing. Story 2 The Spirit of Sturgeon Creek We frequently attend a campground in Spotsylvania County, Virginia. We've been going there since I was about seven years old. One thing we like to do at night is wander around the woods. This has always thought to be a tad dangerous, especially for those who don't know the trails. It's really not a good idea. One day we walked, during the day, further the back than we had ever been before. We found a cow farm. We memorized the way and decided that it would be fun to head back there at the middle of the night and tip some cows or something. It was a stupid idea. Well, we did. We headed that way in the middle of the night, not expecting to meet what we were about to. We were deep in the woods, almost near the farm. We heard something treading through the lake below us. There's a hill that leads down to a small lake. If you're heading towards the farm, it's off to the right. Up the hill from the lake walked the most sickly looking dog I have ever seen, with another dog not far behind it. It was black, with eyes that had a slight red glow to it, nothing too ghastly or ghostly. I was more worried about the threat of wild dog attacks as many people have been killed by them throughout the years. Not really in this area, but across the country. When they were about three feet from us, the dog turned around and headed back towards the lake. 
making no noise, and then seemed to vanish near the muddy lake below. This kind of scared us, and we thought it was wise to head back before something else spooky happened. Following the trail, walking back towards the campground, we suddenly heard a loud howling sound that seemed to be close, maybe a hundred yards away. There's no wolves in this area, at least not that I'm aware of. That was not the end of the fright by any means. We were still a good distance away from from the site of our first encounter of the night. On a trail that winded up to a point, I got out my flashlight and looked around and set upon a set of legs. To be honest, he was a bit scary. He looked angry. He had a gun in one hand and some sort of sword or saber attached to his side. He didn't have shoes. He was wearing an old, beat-up uniform. He kind of looked like he might have been from the Civil War. His skin was icy blue, and it gave off a slight glow. Definitely ghostly. It walked into the woods without looking back at us bringing a chilly wind as it walked into the dense forest and then it just vanished. It was kind of sad actually and I realized that we were probably out of danger at this point so we took it off towards our camper. Despite the fact that he looked angry this ghost wasn't giving off a vibe of being malicious at all and I felt a little bad. I came up with a theory that he was probably a soldier killed here during the battle. I don't know how the dogs fit into this, and maybe they don't. I'm not sure the dogs were even ghosts. Maybe they just mangy dogs that needed to be taken to the shelter. As for the spirit, I like to call him the spirit of Sturgeon Creek, because that was the creek closest by to us. I might have to go back sometime and try to get another look at him. Story 3. The Girl My friend had just moved into a new house. But the house already had a pretty bad reputation. The person that sold them the house told them that if anything weird happened, that they should move out as fast as they could and not take a thing with them. But nothing bad had happened yet. This was the first time I'd spent the day at their house. So, of course, we wanted to know the history of the house. Why was the realtor so emphatic that they should be cautious? We found out that a teenage girl had been murdered in the house. We were shocked, but we let it pass. Early in the morning, around 3 o'clock, we were playing outside. When I accidentally threw the ball over to the side of the house... My friend went to get the ball and all of a sudden let out a blood-curdling scream. I went over to see what happened and all I saw was her run as fast as she could. She was halfway down the block before I caught up with her. When I got her calm, she said that she saw a girl walk up to her in the side of the house and just scream right in her face. And then, poof, the girl was gone. I believe her, because she looked truly terrified when I caught up with her. I'd never seen anyone run that fast. That night when we was trying to sleep, we heard a lot of sounds. Banging and dragging. And over the course of my friend owning this house... They saw the girl a few more times and heard lots of noises. Her family did not stay in this house long, and they finally moved. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the stories. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Music, courtesy of Carl Casey at White Bat Audio.